Let us start with the fairness evaluation of plasmids offered by Thermo Fisher Scientific. Why plasmids? Plasmids are what we use in the lab to work with uh, genetics. And we take advantage that bacteria like plasmids and uh, we can select the bacteria based on antibiotics. So usually a plasmid map tells you what exactly is inside without you seeing the sequence. And this is what I'm showing you here. So let's, uh, this is a representation of a plasmid map. Usually we'll have uh, a cassette for antibiotic resistance. Then uh, it will have a place for the gene that you want to use or create or express in the bacteria or the eukaryotic cells and usually has a origin of replication. That is kind of like a schematic way to see how a plasmid looks like and then you get an idea, can you use it or not in the future? But if you really need to work with it, you need to have some information about it and, uh, and really a specific information. So you need a sequence yeah what exactly was it made for because not everybody knows all the different uh, applications and they are being created all the time that you really need to know what the what the vector was made for then you have uh, what i showed you before this vector plasmid map usually has more than what i showed you it should have some features and the position of these features meaning where exactly is cutting the enzymes, uh, what we call restriction enzymes sites. Then we have the genes, which I already showed you, like antibiotic resistance, but exactly where is it starting and where is over, where are the promoters or pieces that allow us to know where the, uh, yeah, how we can manipulate the expression of the genes and the origin of replication but everything has to have a position so that we are able to work with it and modify it if we need to adapt it for future work now these are the general parameters that we are going to look um, so fair is for findable accessible interoperable and reusable let us look how it does apply to the uh, plasmids so findable do we find the information about the plasmid in a repository with a DOI or with a unique identifier? Um, uh, about accessibility, is the vector map openly accessible and are their references open accessible? Interoperable, so the sequence and map are in fair compatible data format like FASTA or GeneBank and can they be accessed by a computer protocol meaning I, if i want to uh, tell my computer download the fasta file can i do it in the place where it is um, in the repository and uh, is it reusable so does the license allow us the use of the plasmid and does the data use a domain relevant community standards ad gene is the community standards for um for looking at plasmids um, we will go at some point over adgene, um, but yeah, let's go over what we find in this uh, plasmid. I'm going to show you the screencast of what happened when I look for a plasmid in Thermo Fisher site. So let's see, um, this is the website and let's look for plasmids. So it says there is a control kit plasmid and here for example this is i think from gipco so that means that is trademark we'll see and let's go here that's the catalog number is for million subculture let's see if we find everything first um half of the website is in english and half of it is in german then we have here it says for research not for diagnostic it has the specification yeah let's see if they have in the documents if all this information is in a um, general kind of like api so the quality control is here which is nice um the safety data sheet which is a part of the legal things and the manuals 
but I don't see any link. Let's see what it shows us with the manuals. Yeah, so it has the information sheet. Let's see if it has a reference for a repository. It has the helper vector, it's adenovirus, PUC, canamycin. Okay, it has the information, it's tiny, but it's there. Um, that's the other one. Hmm. Okay, the sites are here. There is no... There's a versioning system, which is, I find it really nice. But there is no sequence. <laughs> there is no sequence. There's only the description. There's no link for the sequence. Here, does the catalog number. But that's about it. We have no idea. We know the concentration, the expression system, but we have no idea of the sequence. <laughs> then we will have to contact the technical uh, system or the service for the, um, the client, client services. But there is no sequence whatsoever. We don't have access to the sequences. So in this case, if I will be the one trying to use this, I will have to go and look for this in the Google and try to figure out if there are any sequences available. So we have no access to the sequences. Oh, that's a typical problem with these things. So if you would like to modify it or make sure that you have the sequences you cannot maybe we miss something Let's see. they don't even have references do they have references nope no reference to where that has been used or anything at all okay so not good not good so here's the summary of the exploration that I just showed you. Um, the item name was called uh, AAV Max Control Plasmid Kit. It's a kit with several plasmids. Let's see. So, is it findable? Um, no, nope, not really. The information was not in any repository with a DOI or a unique identifier. I could not find the sequence. There is a lot of space for improvement here. Is it accessible? Could we open the map accessible and can we look at the references? Um, not that I was able to. Again, something to improve here. Is it um, sequence and map are fair, compatible, data format faster bank and can they be accessed by computer protocol? No, nope. I was not able to find it in any of the normal repositories for sequences and not on the FASTA or GeneBank. I found a sequence, but it doesn't tell me where the features are. So I will have to run it through a new program to try to find what the features are of that plasmid. Uh, a lot of things to do here. Is it reusable? Um, I looked for the license. I mean, I suppose they are selling it. But if we are able to modify it and things like that, I'm not sure I could find that information. Um, so I cannot tell you. Um, does the data use domain relevant community standards? Not really. Um, the ad gene works a little bit different and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so let's look at it. A gene is the place where most of the people place their genes or their vectors, um, kind of like a repository for plasmids. And they have very high standards and standards that are able to share science. That means um, fair. What do they need? So they're, oh, they're antibodies as well. Good to know. But um, 
they use uh, the adjin you can deposit stuff there you can request and you can learn about it now they are kind of like the standard for the for the plasmids so let's let's look at one of the plasmids let's look at the ppr 322 22 i think it's called let's see pbr da, da, da. let's look at the plasmid yeah so there are all the plasmids um there's a pbr 322 trimer that means this thing means that is um one of the ones that most of the people asks for um, it says expression for fluorescent timer protein suitable for bacteria under control of the promoter so let's look what it does so it has a plasmid which is a, an identifier a unique identifier it has the article associated to it good and uh, the person who is responsible for the the, the position here in the vector in the bank um what insert it is and they have the map so when you look at the map you as you uh, created by snapchain which not everybody has access to but at least you can see and you can do some planning okay so let's see if there is a sequence attached to it let's go directly to the plasmid and here is the sequence so there is one sequence the backbone is here described the information of the cloning the references and if there are the terms and licenses how you can share it um, or ask for it and use it which is super fair let's look at the sequence so yep the sequence has the results um, it has the gene bank so this is the FASTA file uh, that's the full sequence I'm assuming and just look at what does it really happen when we look at the gene bank so it gives me this uh, gene bank and I see the keywords the information that was there that is circular the authors and uh, yep this is the part that I love the most so not only that is where was the origin but um, that is a synthetic where does the primer bind so if you don't have one of the commercial vector kind of like draw, drawing com, uh, sorry drawing softwares you can still use these with some of the open science to draw your own vector and you're not 100 percent dependent on them so that is really good that's the origin perfect so that is that those are the standards for vectors so if you have a plasmid that is what you should be having or that kind of information you should have access to so based on this it can be improved as well so in summary there is a lot of room for improvement in these uh, plasmids in the information that um, thermoscientific gives so if you are from thermoscientific <laughs> we will be really really grateful if you guys can improve your uh, information to make it a little bit more open access see you in the next one bye